Asthma is disease which causes difficulty breathing, coughing and chest tightness. Asthma attacks can be caused several different factors such as stress, exercise, cold air, nighttime, allergens and other environmental factors. In many people with asthma, cold weather worsens or induces asthma symptoms. Generally, mouth and nose warms air before it reach lungs, but in winter, dry and cold air reach lungs more easy, because upper respiratory organs can not effectively warm it. Cold air dries bronchi and creates environment to induce inflammation, furthermore cold air causes bronchial constriction and its additional factor for asthma attack. Researchers once believed that the coldness of the air was the primary trigger of symptoms. However, more up-to-date research indicates that the dryness, rather than the temperature, is the culprit. A person often finds that their symptoms worsen when they are being active outdoors, jogging, running or doing other kind of physical activities. During exercise, it is more common to breathe through the mouth than the nose. Because the mouth does not warm air as well as the nose, a person is more likely to inhale colder air while exercising. A combination of physical activity and breathing cold air can significantly worsen asthma symptoms. Cold-induced asthma symptoms include Chest pain Coughing Feeling short of breath Sensation of tightness in the chest, wheezing Symptoms usually start shortly after exposure cold and dry air. Symptoms can last short period of time, however, an individual with more severe asthma may experience longer-lasting symptoms. Prevention of cold-induced asthma Warming up before going outdoors. It means exercise or any kind of aerobic physical activity, for example dancing. Warming up several minutes is enough. Using a short-acting inhaler 10 to 15 minutes before going outdoors. This can reduce the likelihood that cold air will cause the airways to narrow. Wearing something that covers the mouth when outside. Covering the mouth with a scarf, for example, can warm the air on its way to the lungs. Breathing trough the nose whenever possible. Treatment. Stepwise approach for management of asthma. Step 1. If asthma is intermittent. Treatment is short-acting beta-2 agonist. For example salbutamol. Management of persistent asthma. Step 2. Daily low dose of inhaled corticosteroids and low dose of short-acting beta-2 agonist. Alternative therapy for first step. Daily. Leukotriene receptor antagonist, or chromalin, or nedochromil, or theophylline, and short-acting beta-2 agonist. Step 3. Daily and PR in combination low-dose inhaled corticosteroid, and formoterol. Alternative therapy include. Daily medium-dose inhaled corticosteroid and short-acting beta-2 agonist. Or daily low-dose inhaled corticosteroids, long-acting beta-2 agonist. Or, daily low-dose inhaled corticosteroids, plus leukotriene receptor antagonist. Or daily low-dose inhaled corticosteroids plus theophylline and beta-2 agonist. Step 4. Daily combination medium-dose inhaled corticosteroid and formoterol. Alternative. Daily medium-dose inhaled corticosteroids short-acting beta-2 agonist. Daily medium-dose inhaled corticosteroids plus leukotriene receptor antagonist. Or daily medium-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus theophylline, asterisk, and short-acting beta-2 agonist. Step 5. Daily high-dose inhaled corticosteroid and short-acting beta-2 agonist. Alternative. Daily high-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus leukotriene receptor antagonist. Or daily high-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus theophylline and short-acting beta-2 agonist. Step 6. Daily high-dose inhaled corticosteroid long-acting beta agonist plus oral systemic corticosteroid and inhaled short-acting beta-2 agonists. Alternative. High-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus leukotriene receptor antagonist plus systemic corticosteroid or daily high-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus theophylline plus opral systemic corticosteroid plus short-acting beta-2 agonist. First check adherence, inhaler technique, environmental factors, and comorbid conditions.
Step up if needed, reassess in two to six weeks. Step down if possible, if asthma is well controlled for at least three consecutive months, consult with asthma specialist if step four or higher is required. Consider consultation at step three. Control assessment is a key element of asthma care. This involves both impairment and risk. Use of objective measures, self-reported control, and healthcare utilization are complementary and should be employed on an ongoing basis, depending on the individual's clinical situation.